Guys, what if you could learn to stay safe from your biggest relationship threats in one video? Sounds crazy? Today, I'm going to teach you the warning signs of anxiously attached women and the method you need to weed them out and repel them so that you don't get a nasty divorce 20 years down the line and get yourself gutted. Sounds crazy? All right, I'm going to show you. I'm attachment specialist, Adam Lane Smith. I have been doing this for 15 years, studying relationships and psychology, and I help make relationships better. And big shout out really quick to all my members who've signed up for YouTube memberships. That new feature I just activated, it helps me to continue pumping out videos. Right now we're at about 450, not including this one. We've got more coming all the time. Thank you for helping support my work. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next live stream. And if you are brand new on this channel, welcome. I am glad you're here. I'm going to take care of you today. Now in this playlist specifically, I'm showing men how to stay safe from getting heartbroken or gutted by anxiously attached women because it's a real threat. By the end of this video, you're going to know how to protect yourself and stay safe so people don't rob you in a nasty divorce. Let's get into it. You need to understand that anxious attachment relies on a few key components to slip in under your defenses. So to start at the beginning of the relationship, to recap here, they are super kind. There are no strings to anything. Everything seems great. These are the girls that get in and say, oh, we have a situationship. It's totally fine. They'll call it a situationship behind your back, maybe not even to your face. Everything's cool to your face. Behind your back, they're like, oh, I've been in this situationship. I don't know what to do. This is, these are the girls who usually use that word. At the beginning, they're low drama. They are all fun. Everything is catered to you and making you feel great. Then about seven months into a year, things start to really shift. A couple examples from some coaching clients I've worked with, right? At seven months, all of a sudden, she has a problem with everything you do. Seven months, suddenly she hates your friends. Seven months, suddenly it's, well, you know, we should actually make a commitment. And then she starts pushing and being nasty about it. Seven months, she starts using words like covert narcissist. You're a covert narcissist keeping me in a situationship. I don't feel safe with you because you don't listen to me. How does that make you feel unsafe? I don't know. The point is, suddenly you're a bad guy. At a year, suddenly you're really a bad guy. There's lots of resentment. They've done all these things for you. Oh, I had a threesome for you. I would never normally do that, but it was all for you. I did all these things for you. Don't I cook for you all the time? Don't I do all your laundry? Don't I do all this for you? Yeah, nobody asked you to. Well, you didn't ask me, but I did it for you, so you owe me for that. Okay, tons of resentment. Back up a minute. Let's back up a minute from that one year mark. There were so many things that probably flew under your radar. Lots of red flags that you didn't check for at first. I'm going to show you how to check for them. Let's explore some of those red flags. Here are the signs you need to look for from now on. Now, number one is she doesn't share any needs. I've heard this before, right? I'm like, hey, you know what? She's crying. She's a mess at year one. Okay. Hey, has she ever shared her needs with you? Oh, no, I, I don't think she even has needs. Everyone has needs, bro. Like, okay, what do you mean she's never asked for needs? Well, I don't know. She never has. When you ask her to eat somewhere, does she freak out and like, anything you want, anything you want? Does she do everything possible to avoid telling you what she wants anywhere? Yeah, she does. Big red flag. If she can't state her needs, it's because she thinks she doesn't deserve them and that she will be treated like a burden for having them. She is just here for the fun. Everything is just fun. Fun, fun, fun. I don't care. I don't even care if we talk about attachment. I don't even care if we talk about strings or exclusivity. It's all good. No, no, no. She's thinking about it. She's just pretending not to. Everything, everything is about you. Oh, let me take your shoes off for me. Let me rub your feet. Let me cook you a dinner. Let me do this in the nude. I'll be completely naked except for this apron for like the first six months, right? Like, okay, that's cool. But it's all the time. All the time. She's super super eager to please. Everything is about, is this enough? Is this okay? Is this great? Is this okay? Constantly checking in to see how you feel. Like hyper vigilant about it. And she's so hungry for approval. Your approval is everything. Now, anxious signs, really important. A lot of anxious signs. Anxiety and depression symptoms, right? Freaking out all the time. Always stressed. A history of trauma can indicate this too. Check for histories of trauma. Not to demonize anyone who has anxious attached, anxious issues or, or depression or trauma. Not saying that, but look for those issues because those can be tied in with this. Especially childhood issues, you guys. Issues that she has let slip from childhood. Parent issues. Relationship problems with her parents, especially the opposite sex parent. If she's struggling to soothe herself during stress, right? She's stressed out. I just can't handle it. And she's got a lot of dopamine binging behaviors, maybe some addictive behaviors, and she's always stressed. And in bed, 
It's just for you. Everything's about you. She doesn't even have needs in bed. Maybe she has a hard time orgasming, but she's just there completely for you. Almost like a sex doll, like an, like an over eager sex doll. Who's just there purely for you, at least for the first six or seven months. Everything in fact is about you all the time, but once in a while, there's some resentment, right? Four or five months in, like, well, you should know what I want by now. You should know that I like. You should know that I'm not just doing it for no reason. You should be, you should care enough to give back to me. If I'm doing these things for you, you should care enough to give to me. Well, okay, but I don't know what you want. Well, you should care enough to know. They expect mind reading, right? Anytime they expect mind reading, huge red flag. Bad days, they blow up. Then they go back to super pleasing to accommodate. Oh my gosh, I just did something awful. Oh my God. And they freak out and back to super pleasing mode. So it's explode, super pleasing, super pleasing, explode, super pleasing, constantly back and forth. One big piece here is that real conflicts, like direct conflicts, it feels like death to them. Death. It feels like they're going to die from being abandoned. They are obsessed with abandonment. Abandonment is their number one terror. If you see these red flags, you guys, okay, you see these? If you've seen these in the relationship, let's step back a step further. Here's the key to protecting yourself is when you are first dating, listen for these red flags in the first few dates. Number one, she drops issues about her parents, right? Her parents are divorced. They're split up. Nothing against people with divorced parents. A lot of people have this, but big red flag. Her parents are divorced. Her parents were never married. She doesn't talk to her dad. She doesn't talk to her mom. She mentions lots of problems with her parents. Big red flag. If she has tons of anxiety and she's talking about her anxiety and she's always worried and everything is worried and anxious and she's anxious on the date. Big red flag in the dating process. Self-deprecating language. Jokes about herself. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not pretty. Oh, I'm sorry. I did this. I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry. Always apologizing and we're putting herself down. Tons of self-doubt. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Oh, wow. I don't know if I could do that. That's amazing. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't have that ability. Oh, I'm just, I'm just not special like that. Problem saturated stories. This is one pulled from something called narrative therapy. Problem saturated stories. Every problem, they, every story they tell you is nothing but problems. People betraying them, problems they can't solve. They are helpless in everything, right? Helpless in all their stories and bad things just happen to them and everyone else is the problem and they're always the victim. Also, they have no needs or expectations. Hey, you know, what do you expect in a relationship? What are you looking for in a relationship? Oh, just anything. I'm, I'm just happy to be here. I'm, I'm just happy. It's fine. Everything's fine. No needs, no expectations. Also, they attach to you way too fast. They get way too into you way too quick and they can't back off. They have no brake pedal. It's just gas pedal even faster. It's one gas pedal and then a second gas pedal. They keep, like, and that's it. Like they cannot help themselves. And sex way too early for approval, right? Like jump your bones day one kind of thing. Not, not everybody who has sex on the first date is anxiously attached, but if they're ready to go, like just with a small push, they have to be interesting. That's what they think. They have to constantly try to be interesting or they'll lose your attention because they aren't worthy of attention just by themselves. And they are always trying to serve you, right? Day one, they're like, how can I help you? How can I add to your life? How can I fix you? How can I do this for you? codependency. They need to be needed immediately so you don't abandon them. Now, if you miss these, go back and look at those signs inside the relationship that we talked about. Really important that you focus on this and you understand the signs you're looking at. Look at them in the red for the red flags in dating. Look at the red flags in the relationship. If you see these, here's some tips you can start using to push back, right? Number one is that conflicts make them want to die. They fear abandonment big time and anything but that. And conflicts are terrifying to them because a conflict is a place to reveal they're a fraud, for them to be a burden, to be unloved, worthless, and for you to abandon them. Conflicts, they will do anything to avoid honest, direct conflict. But conflicts are probably also scary for you if you're avoidant, right? You don't think people are going to ever act fair during a conflict, that people are going to try to take everything they can from you. Avoidant people, they avoid conflict. It's not that you think you're going to get abandoned. You're going to get screwed in a bad way, right? But conflicts are key. You need to push for conflicts, push them and, and be, be gentle in those conflicts, but make them be direct. You also need to push for their needs to be made clear. Hey, you have a need. Cool. I need to hear it. I cannot read your mind and I never will. And if you expect that, I cannot maintain a relationship like that because I just don't have that power. I'm sorry. If you tell me, I will help. Push for those needs to be clear and don't ever go back on that. Also push for clear expectations. Look, what do you want out of a relationship? What do you expect from me? What do you need from me? What are the boundaries? Great. Do that. Be a hundred percent clear. Most avoidant people, if expectations and needs are clear and on the table, 
all of a sudden the avoidance is not as big of a problem <laughs> because it's, it's being exhausted trying to guess those things that makes you usually exhausted, right? Also, I'm just going to put this on the table. Don't love bomb at the start. If you ever do, some avoiding people like, ooh, I guess I kind of do that a little bit at the beginning, right? Don't. Be aware of how you give kindness. Be aware big time of how you give kindness to other people, how much you're giving and how they're responding to it. Don't oversaturate them with way too much kindness and attention at the beginning. Uh, don't be super tactical, like, okay, I have to measure that. But be aware of how much you're giving out. You might be giving out more than you intend or more than you realize. Also, push back, like I said, against those demands of mind reading by being logical in arguments. Don't step into that caretaker role. You need to make them self-soothe but be clear and logical in the arguments that you do have with them, those conflicts. Make them self-soothe. Look, I, I can't be here all the time for you to take care of your emotional needs. You are an adult. I'm happy to help when I can, but I need you to step into a role where you are taking care of yourself. And don't let yourself be forced into the victim role or into the villain role, the villain role, because they will treat you like the bad guy in their story eventually. Remember that you are not evil. They're going to pull up all kinds of TikTok videos. Look, look, look what you're doing to me. You're a covert narcissist. You're this, you're this. And, and believe me, there's so much information online and you can start to really believe that you are evil and you're not. So get some outside perspective on what's reasonable to, man, to demand in relationships. Sometimes people come to me in my attachment circle community and they say, Adam, look, here's the demands my partner's making on me. Is this realistic? Usually no. Get some outside perspective from somebody who can tell you Yes, it's reasonable. No, it's not. And quite frankly, the biggest thing is to ask for space for yourself. Be direct about it. They can adjust, hopefully, to being giving you space, right? It's important that they give you that space. If they can, then it's fixable. If they can stop and say, okay, you know what? You're right. You need that space. I need to manage myself. Cool. You can start fixing it. I can help people who are anxiously attached. I have a whole book for this. I have a course for this. It's part of my job. But if they won't... If they keep freaking out, if it's your fault, you probably need to escape. Okay, guys, so million dollar question. How do you escape from a relationship like this if you're in one? Or how do you fix your own avoidant attachment style so you aren't attracted to anxiously attached women anymore so that you cut this problem off at the root? In the very next video in this playlist, I'm going to teach you about how to master your attachment style so you can handle this anxiety and make sure that these women aren't attaching to you anymore. So don't miss that video because you're going to learn how to take control of your dating life and stay safe.